Good morning on this beautiful Easter morning. And Christ has risen. Christ is risen indeed. We'd like to welcome you all here this morning, those who are with us in person and those who are with us virtually. And we would like to offer our praise and our thanks to God for all that God has done for us. I'm Reverend Lucille Fritz of the Huntington Congregational Church, United Church of Christ in Chelsea, Connecticut, where no matter who you are, no matter where you are in life's journey, you are more than welcome here. I'd like to say a special thank you to our organist today, Deb, who's with us, and we thank you for being with us and augmenting our worship here. So let us uh, just take a few moments to close our eyes and take some nice deep breaths. As we come here on this beautiful Easter morning, let us breathe out all the debris, all the sorrow, all the disappointment that we've experienced, and breathe in new life. Breathe in renewing breath. Breathe in resurrection power. And know that the presence of God is eternally in you, through you, and around you.
rejoice in Christ's empty tomb. We come trusting in the good news that tells us that Christ is with us. The risen Christ offers us glimpses of hope even in our tears. The tomb is not quiet. It proclaims the promise of eternal life. Thank you, gracious and almighty God. Amen. Our scripture reading today is from the Gospel of Mark. Chapter 16, reading the first eight verses. Listen for the word of God. When the Sabbath was over, Mary Magdalene and Mary the mother of James and Salome brought spices so that they may go and anoint Jesus. And very early on the first day of the week, when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. They had been saying to one another, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance to the tomb? When they looked up, they saw that the stone, which was very large, had already been rolled back. As they entered the tomb, they saw a young man dressed in a white robe, sitting on the right side, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You are looking for Jesus of Nazareth, who was crucified. He has been raised. He is not here. Look, there is the place they laid him. But go, tell his disciples and Peter, that is going ahead of you to Galilee. There you will see him just as he told you. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. May God a blessing to the hearing and reading of these holy words. Let us pray. Gracious God, may the words of my mouth and the meditation of all of our hearts be acceptable in your sight. O oh God, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Now, obviously, we are sitting here on Easter morning, so they must have said something to somebody. But here it says that they said nothing. That terror and amazement gripped them. A little bit of background about the Gospel of Mark. The Gospel of Mark is the oldest Gospel, and this is the end of the Gospel in the oldest manuscripts that they have found of this Gospel. Now, if you look in the Bible, you will find that there are two additional endings that were added much later. But this was the original ending of the Gospel of Mark. So they went out and fled from the tomb, for terror and amazement had seized them. And they said nothing to anyone, for they were afraid. Nothing. They said nothing. Well, obviously, they did say something. And down through the ages, people continued to say something about the resurrection of Jesus Christ. So I want you to think about that. How did you first hear about Jesus rising from the dead? Maybe it was from your parents, maybe it was from your siblings, maybe it was from a Sunday school teacher, maybe it was from an evangelist on television like Billy Graham, maybe it was on church on Sunday. How did we hear it? And the reality is we did hear it. We heard the good news of Jesus Christ. That Jesus came into this world to show us what God was truly like, a loving God that considers us, us all beloved, that longs to gather us all as a hen gathers her chicks. 
who offers us love and light, forgiveness and eternity. The good news of Jesus Christ. And we have heard it because people did not say nothing. They continually told the story of God's great love for us in Jesus Christ. They read the scriptures, they preached, they sang hymns, they offered prayers. So we would know that we truly are not alone at any point in our life. In the deepest darkness and the deepest sorrow, God is there. In the greatest joys and in those wonderful times, God is there. God never leaves us or forsakes us. And that is the truth of the gospel. That God loves us all so much. That Christ came to us offering us forgiveness of sin, eternal life, and truly, truly reminding us that love never dies. That empty tomb is a testament to God's great love for us all and for all humanity and for all the universe. God created it in love and for love. And each of us have heard it because people did not say nothing. So too, may we not say nothing about God's great, great gift for us in our lives. Whether we use words or whether we use deeds, deeds of kindness and peace and justice, May we tell that good news. May we never say nothing about what God has done for us. And we remember. We remember that as we come to this table today, this table of God's love, this table of God's abiding presence, this table, a reminder of what Christ did for us in his life, and in his death, and in his resurrection. This is a reminder, as we take in those elements, that we symbolically take in Christ, knowing that Christ is with us. So we gather on this holy day, this day of resurrection, and we share in this bread, and we share in this cup, and we remember. Let us pray. Oh, holy God, we thank you. We thank you for all that you have done for us, all that you are doing for us, and all that you will do for us. We thank you for your beautiful creation, for all the goodness and bounty. We thank you that you created each one of us in your image as your beloved. And yet we know we sometimes drift off the path. But you never left us. You constantly reached out in the words of prophets in the words of apostles, in the words of kings and queens, in the words of judges, in the words of common people who were called to tell your story. Sometimes we listened, sometimes we didn't. So you came to us in Jesus Christ. You emptied yourself to walk among us, to share our lives, to share our joys, to share our sorrows. You are not a God that is detached or unknowing. You know what we face as humans, the best of life and the worst of life. But Christ persevered. He continued to serve you with his love and his light 
bringing us hope and peace and love and joy. And so we remember. We remember that on the night of his betrayal and desertion, he took bread and he broke it. He gave it to his disciples and said, take and eat, it is my body broken for you. Do this in remembrance of me. And after supper, he took the cup, and after giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples and said, Take and drink. This cup is a new covenant in my blood put out for you for the forgiveness of sin. So as often as we eat this bread and take this cup, we are reminded what Christ did for us. O Holy God, we ask that the presence of your Holy Spirit be upon these gifts and be upon us, that they may be Christ's life in our life, that we may be Christ's life in this world. <clears throat> strengthen us as your people, strengthen us as your community of faith, that we may be witnesses to your resurrection. And instead of saying nothing, we say everything about your great love for us. And help us to always remember that great mystery, that Christ has died, Christ has risen, and Christ will come again. And may you hear us as we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. This is the bread of life. Take and eat. This is the cup of blessing. Take and drink. Let us pray. We thank you, gracious God, especially on this day, as we partake once more of Christ's presence into our lives. And also that we are reminded of Christ's resurrection you have given us all things. Forgiveness of sin, life eternal, and love that never dies. And we thank you. We thank you, gracious God, for all the gifts that you give us, the beauty of creation around us, the people in our lives who love us and support us and teach us and challenge us. We thank you for times that we can celebrate, even if it's virtually. And we thank you for birthdays and for anniversaries, time to remember and celebrate the goodness of life. We especially thank you for your son, Jesus, our crucified and risen Savior and for your Holy Spirit that continues to work in us to help us to continue to tell the story and not say nothing. 
We thank you. And we thank you that you hear our prayers and you answer them. Sometimes we don't like the answer. But we know that you are faithful and that you are with us through it all. So we do offer up our prayers to you, gracious God, for all of us and all people and all creation. We pray for those who have lost loved ones. We pray for those who are sick. We pray for those who are lonely, especially in this time of pandemic. We pray for those who are lost and confused. We pray for those who have lost their homes and lost their jobs. We pray for those who are struggling with addictions. We pray for those who are struggling with money issues. We pray for those who are struggling with relationship issues. We pray for all people and all the struggles that we face by being human. May you offer your comfort and your strength, your wisdom, and your hope. And for our world, we pray for your love that leads to justice and your justice that leads to peace. May we all one day See each other as brother and sister, siblings. May we one day love people more than we love power and money. May we one day fully live into this resurrection power and feel that newness of new life and new excitement for you and for your world. So may you continue to bless us with your Holy Spirit. May you continue to fill us with Christ's presence, that we may be light, that we may be life, that we may be love. And we pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you.
Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Go in joy. Go in peace. Amen. Thank you.